Hi friends, uh, today we are going to discuss legal aspects of medical practice or else you can call it as medical legal issues in medical practice. Myself, uh, Professor Suresh Bharadmat, I have done my MD DNB and also medical law ethics and also human rights law, PhD in law from National Law School. Currently, I am working as a professor of psychiatry, head of telemedicine center, head of forensic psychiatry services at Nimans, Bangalore. I do also teach in National Law School as an honorary teacher for medical law ethics program. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. This presentation is basically for academic purpose only. If you would like to have any legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. This presentation is not a law themselves or not a substitute for legal profession. This presentation do not discuss any individual legislation like MTP Act, PNDT Act, TOHA Act, POCSO, Mental Health Care Act or RPWD Act and so forth. There are many acts which I am not going to discuss. Now I am coming to criminal negligence. So we discussed about depending upon the type of negligence. If it is very severe, it is criminal negligence. If it is in between reasonable degree of care of care is then it is civil case. Now we will talk about criminal negligence case. So criminal negligence under Indian Penal Code there are four important uh, what we call it a section. Section 304A that is under Indian Penal Code causing death of a person by doing any rash or negligent act so which does not amount to culpable homicide. Basically a doctor is doing surgery and the patient dies. So 304A can be pressed. Rash and negligent act causing endangering to human life. He has not died endangering. So putting somebody's life under risk. Or else it may be like the doctor is doing surgery and the patient goes into coma there and they begin recovers. But endangering human life, that is what is considered. Section 337, basically rash and negligent causing endangering. It may be like grievous injury and 338 may be a simple injury. So this is how the criminal negligence case are pressed against the doctor. There are two important landmark cases in these two. One is Suresh Gupta versus Government of Delhi, that is in 2004, and Jacob Matthew versus State of Punjab in 2005. Now I will take these two cases. All doctors should know about these cases if you are going to practice in India. First and the foremost, I'll talk about Dr. Suresh Gupta versus Government of uh, Government of Delhi. This is available online. In this case, Dr. Suresh Gupta being a uh, what we call it as ENT surgeon, he goes advice for a patient in person around I think 38 or 39 for a deviated nasal septum, a elective surgery. He is called for a surgery early morning and he is put on for surgery. During surgery, they have to put a endotracheal tube. Instead of they find that there is no cuffed endotracheal tube, they will go for a plain endotracheal tube. The surgery is done. By the time they realize the patient is dead. Now the family becomes very angry, they go to the court, they give a police complaint. In, during the police complaint, they said that the, a, a person who is able to walk, talk nicely goes to the hospital and a dead body is given back to us. The police also come there, they take the doctors into custody, lot of hunger markers and then it goes to Supreme Court. He has been arrested, all those things. So now, now we will keep this Suresh Gupta case aside. Now we will come to Jacob Matthew case. This is also a very interesting case which has occurred in is a Dr. Jacob Matthew, a well-known doctor in CMC Ludhiana. A elderly man is brought to the hospital. The Dr. Jacob Matthew says that see this, you are the elderly man is already in the what we call it as terminal stage of cancer. You better take care of him at home. But the father, the son of that elderly man says he is being in a high bureaucratic position, in a government servant, in a high bureaucratic position. He requests Dr. Jacob Matthew, sir, in my house, I can't take care. I have a lot of duties to do. Please provide him whatever minimum necessary care is there. But Jacob Matthew says, see, he is in the end stage of his life. You have to consider home care. But he said, no, no, please admit him because he used his, all his bureaucratic pressure and he is admitted. He is admitted in the hospital. He has been looked after. In one uh, fine day early morning, this elderly man goes into gasping, breathlessness. The nurse will call Jacob Matthew doctor. 
by the time the doctor comes it is around 25 30 minutes and they go directly they find the still the elderly man is gasping they go and they bring the oxygen cylinder now unfortunately when they open the oxygen cylinder the cylinder is empty by the time they bring another cylinder the patient dies this bureaucrat goes to police station gives a complaint again jacob matthew and team have been taken to task by the police it's a criminal case imagine so if a doctor providing care suddenly some negative outcome occurs should the doctor be arrested should the doctor to be taken paraded in the society and is hospitally shut down and if there is a publicity given this doctor has made a mistake how many patients will come to him what will happen if the doctor was not found to be guilty in the subsequently what will happen to his reputation who will pay the money these were the questions have been discussed in this whole scenario and what will be the impact in the larger society of the doctor will the doctor take risk in admitting such cases or will they take a risk in operating a difficult case or a poor outcome case will they take risk so these have been discussed in both the cases suresh gupta and jacob matthew in both the cases the supreme court said none of the doctors are criminally responsible that means this negligence cannot be gross negligent and the doctors were exonerated from the case so that is the beauty of supreme court judgment in this case they said just because the instrument doesn't work it is the doctor cannot be held responsible since there is a no endo uh, scuffed endotracheal tube in suresh gupta case he cannot be held responsible because of the hospital problem even in jacob matthew case a cylinder is empty you can't hold him responsible for it so that's how the case has been discussed in supreme court and they said this negligence cannot amount to criminal negligence you can ask for civil negligence and compensation but not a criminal case so in this they said in this both the case to say a doctor is criminally responsible negligence is to be an essential ingredient of the offense the negligence to be established by the prosecution must be culpable very gross though section 304a did not have this gross or culpable the supreme court to protect the doctor's community came up with this word culpable and gross that means the doctor should be almost did it deliberately to that level then only the criminal charges can be pressed not only that to protect the doctor's community the supreme court gave a guideline for arresting a doctor before if there is any private case or any case has been put against the doctor this following guidelines has to be followed by the io that is investigating officers in this both the case the guidelines have been very clearly dealt out by the supreme court before you arrest a doctor what are the things has to be done so first and the foremost whenever there is a fir against a doctor for medical negligence that to criminal negligence when the case has been filed against the doctor the io has to go to the hospital take over the body send it for post mortem take all the medical records send these records to the state medical council or to the government medical hospital or to the any doctor who is in working in the government in the same area where the patient was undergoing treatment and to get the opinion the opinion also should have if possible to look into the what we call it as the post mortem report with all these report if the doctor was given opinion yes this doctor treating doctor was negligent it was gross negligent is there the doctor can be arrested again you don't arrest the doctor routine manner there should be again the police should have an evidence this doctor may escape or may tamper with the evidence under such circumstances doctor can be taken into custody so but however in many cases the court has been lenient towards the doctor the bail was bail has been granted many a times so please do understand doctors the criminal cases has to be gross negligent and please do your know your rights whenever there is a death don't try to defend in front of the family members let them give a complaint the io has to come the io will take over the body and then he will send it for post mortem please facilitate giving the evidence giving let them take the medical records let them go and give a get an opinion and then still after the opinion is against you 
you they have to come and check whether you are able to escape or whether it is you are not going to escape since if you are having a nursing home i don't think any doctors will escape and then even if they are you are arrested the bail are usually usually granted to the doctors the court also knows that the this profession cannot be uh, pushed further because if they pushed no doctor would like to take risk of treating a patient who is very sick so it's the the court supreme court has managed to keep a balance so the gross negligence is the requirement to have a see what we call it as a criminal negligence after discussing bolan bolito and the cpg guidelines medical negligence criminal negligence we are now moving to civil negligence case in a civil negligence uh, there are different things we can talk about civil court the patient can go to the civil court or to the consumer court nowadays the, the consumer court is very fast many patients do approach consumer court or else if there is no money involved they would like to consider going to the council of india it may be state council or to the central council invariably you have to give first complaint to the state council from there appeal to the central council that is medical council of india or else there is also something called as clinical establishment acts which are there in some states or else private clinical establishment act under that they can also be considered or human rights commission women commission child right commission these also have been considered with regard to civil negligence there are two important landmark cases and i request all the doctor to go through these two important cases first and the foremost is kusum sharma versus batra hospital which came in 2012 and balram prasad kunal shah versus basically it is basically kunal shah versus mri hospital one of the biggest compensation given in the history of medical negligence case coming to kusum sharma versus batra hospital here is again a person working in a government setup in a oil company has severe bp and generalized body swelling it is basically edema generalized edema is there he goes to the one of the hospital i think in 1989 he goes to a hospital in delhi they do some investigation nothing they are found they start i and the hypertensives they continue but in 1990 he develops what we call it as severe hypertension again he has been subjected to various tests and then he will be referred to batra hospital in the batra hospital they do ct scan and ultrasound abdomen they found there is a mass on the kidney so then they ask him for a ask him to undergo surgery the surgery is planned he undergoes surgery during the surgery unfortunately there is a side effect they damage the tail of the pancreas and then they but anyhow because it's a very risky surgery they will put a drain actually in the mid course of time the drain has to be removed and the, the whatever the fistula of surgical drain has been kept it will close on its own but unfortunately it doesn't close there is a further damage occurs again a resurgery is done again one more what we call it as a catheter has been placed draining occurs after that this patient goes to various hospital including games jodhpur hospital one of the hospital in various places he goes and takes treatment and finally he develops pyogenic meningitis and unfortunately he dies they the family of <clears throat> sharma they go to the court asking for huge compensation in that case what happens that is one important landmark case why it is landmark case in this case the supreme court gives a very important points that points every doctor should know that is what is the beauty of kusum sharma versus batra hospital but the another case balram prasad versus kunal shah this case is interesting because the amount of compensation it is almost 11 to 12 crore compensation so from that aspect it needs some attention i will not touch upon balram prasad versus kunal shah discussion because of the paucity of time i will be doing another video on that case moving to kusum sharma what does the supreme court has said in this case in this case the supreme court clearly said negligence is the breach of duty exercised by omission to do something which a reasonable man guided by those consideration which ordinarily ordinarily regulate the conduct of human affair would do or do something which a prudent and reasonable man would not do that is basically which we are discussed in the uh, medical negligence case a reasonable degree of care is which is required a medical practitioner would liable only when his conduct fell below the standard of reasonable competent practitioner in this field this is another very essential i would like to further explain this imagine a psychiatrist is giving 
a medication for schizophrenia. The normal dosage is between 8, 6 to 8 mg. A psychiatrist decides, no, no, I will go for 20 mg. He gives 20 mg. The patient develops severe side effects, maybe tardive dystonia. But the dosage is 6 to 8 mg, but he has given 20 mg. Now, whether he has followed the, fell below the standard of care. If the experts are called, when they are asked, what is the dosage? Everybody in the fraternity, they will say 6 to 8 mg. This doctor need to have a strong reason why he had given 20 mg. And it will be clearly considered as that he has fell below the standard of care of a competent practitioner, which is there, should be in the field. So that is what it is, point number two. Third, the medical professional is expected to bring a reasonable degree of skill and knowledge and must exercise a reasonable degree of care, neither the very highest nor a very low degree of care. And a competence judge in the light of the particular circumstances of each case is what the law requires. In every particular case, where was the doctor? What was the symptoms? What were the available, uh, what we call it as facilities at that time? And if a similar doctor is present at that time, what he would have done? So on that basis, the doctor will be judged. Negligence cannot be attributed to the doctor so long as the performs his duty with reasonable skill and competence. Merely because the doctor chooses one course of action in preference to the other available, he would not be held liable for the negligence case. That is where, that means you have to adhere to the one hour, whichever prevalent acceptable standard of care present at that time. The relief of diagnosis and treatment, again the quote is very clear, just because of the genuine difference of opinion in the diagnosis, the doctor cannot be held negligent. For example, a patient comes with a fever and he is presented in front of a set of 100 physicians. Almost every physician may give his opinion in a different, different way. One may say viral, one may say this may be coronavirus, it may be uh, just a flu, somebody may be say H1N1, somebody may SARS, some may be say uh, maybe Japanese encephalitis, somebody may say meningitis, somebody may say bacterial infection, somebody say malaria, somebody may have tuberculosis. There are thousand diagnoses in fever and the thousand opinions may come. Just because of scope of genuine difference of opinion, the doctor cannot be held negligence for that, for his diagnosis and treatment. For example, a patient comes to with fever. Now, what I will do is I'll send for investigation. Till the investigation comes, I have to treat him. And I will make diagnosis based upon my clinical experience. Just because of genuine difference of opinion, he will not be held responsible. That's what the court has said in this case. That is the beauty of this Kushum Sharma versus Batra Hospital. Negligent is an essential ingredient of the offense. The negligence to be established by the prosecution must be culpable gross in case of criminal negligence. Just an error of judgment will call for civil negligence. That's another important point. So, Coming to the last point with all this civil negligence you have understood, criminal negligence you have understood, following CPG guidelines you have understood and also Bolands and Bolito test. How do you go about reducing the potential, potential of liability in case of uh, what we call it as medical practice? I am coming to the last part of my presentation. Maintain open and honest communication. You have, a, If you are a good communicator, the negligence cases will be very less. Majority of the cases and across the world when they had asked the families, the main reasons they have said is we want to teach a lesson to the doctor because the doctor was very rude. That is the say. So that means communication should be very important. The general population do accept that the doctor tried his best. But if you are rude, if you are shouting, if there is a malpractice involved, the they just they go to the court just only for reason to teach lesson. And they will approach multiple places. They will go to state council. They will put a consumer court. They may even consider human rights commission. They may even give complaint to the what we call it as clinical establishment act. And they make the doctor's life hell because your communication was not open and it is not honest. Be respectful. Be give. Be have empathizing skills. Though I know there may be many a time the family members may become rude under those circumstances. Please don't understand the family has lost somebody or they have gone going through a severe injury. It may not be your, what we call it as negligence. You have not done anything, but still you have to be, uh, sympathy and empathy should be there. Keep open and candid, clear communication. That is very essential. Follow the reasonable standard of care. That is very, very essential. Maintain competence in your area of speciality and area of practice. And the very essential is document properly. If you don't document, that means the court will consider it, you are not done. So very essential is you have to document properly 
at the same time you have to communicate that so essential ingredient is document the communication and communicate the documentation these are very essential and at the same time continue the education classes in your area of expertise so that you are up to date about the knowledge to conclude the medical professions are entitled to get protection from law as long as they perform their duties with reasonable skill and competence and in the interest of the patients so that is very essential the interest and welfare of the patients have to be paramount for the medical profession so my dear uh, uh, doctors please do understand that the courts are not against you and the criminal case to prove that it should be a gross very gross so that is very difficult to prove and uh, the criminal cases are not usually considered uh, weighable against the doctor but of course civil case yes because in the civil case it will be the probability of evidence so who has more evidence if the patient has more evidence he will win the civil case in the if the doctor has more evidence the doctor will win the case especially in civil cases that we call it as the probability of evidence in civil case whereas in criminal case it has to be beyond the reasonable doubt so that is what it is essential in criminal case so uh, doctors please do understand there is a legal liability in your medical practice and one of my teacher used to say that medical practice is like a road traffic accident it's a very concrete but worth understanding you may be very good you may be a very good driver you may be an excellent doctor but the opposite party has drunk and he is driving the vehicle he may come and hit you so you need to have what we call it as insurance when you drive a vehicle there is a need to have insurance similarly if you are practicing at this point of time in the contemporary world better to have insurance for your practice so that is my uh, sincere advice for you all doctors have a nice day thank you very much